Now coming to the rhetorical devices, we would be looking at them stanza wise. For example, we'll take a first stanza, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth, and we'll see that what are the rhetoric devices employed by John Donne in those stanzas. Now coming to the very first stanza, he uses anaphora. Now anaphora is a rhetoric device where a poet repeats the first word successively in two or more than two verses जिसमें पहला word जो है वो repeat होता है और अगर हम इस stanza को देखें तो इसमें R R R R use होता है जैसे for example or R shied my palace R my gout R the king's real face R his stamped face so what John Donne is doing, he is repeating this R time and again. He has repeated almost four times at the beginning of different phrases or different verses. So that repetition of a word at the beginning of successive verses or successive phrases is known as anaphora. The other technique that he has used here is mesodiplosis. Now mesodiplosis is a technique where a word or a class is repeated in the middle of a stanza. Words are a paragraph. For example, in the fifth verse of this stanza, he says, take you a course, get you a place. Now, what he has repeated here is you a, take you a course, get you a place. So, he is repeating you a twice at the middle of two different phrases in a verse. So, that technique, that repetition or that form of repetition is known as as mesodiplosis. Now coming to the second stanza, now he uses the rhetoric device episioxis, which means the repetition of a word without an intervening word. Now if we look at the very first verse of this stanza, it reads alas, alas, who is injured by my love? Now the repetition of alas and alas is an example of episioxis. This repetition comes without any intervening word. There is no word with which, you know, uh, is between alas and alas. So that technique is called as episioxis. Anaphora would be again used in this stanza when he says, when did my cool so forward spring move? When did the heats which my veins fill? Now he is repeating when at the beginning of these two verses. So that is an example of anaphora. Now coming to the third stanza and we'll look at this third stanza and find out that what are the rhetoric devices that he has employed in the third stanza. Metaphysical conceit is employed in this stanza. For example, when he compares himself and his beloved to fly and tapers, that is an example of metaphysical conceit. Another rhetoric device that he has employed here is conduplicatio. Now, a conduplicatio is a technique where a word is repeated throughout a stanza or a paragraph. When a poet writes a paragraph and he repeats one word consistently. For example, if we read this stanza, call us what you will, we are made such by love. Call her one me another fly. We are tapers too and at our own cost die. And we in us find the eagle and the dove. The phoenix riddle hath more wit by us. We too being one are it. So to one eternal thing both sexes fit. We die and rise the same and prove mysterious by this love. So what we find in this stanza is that John Donne has repeated the word we throughout this stanza. He is using we, 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 we and this repetition of one word throughout a stanza or a paragraph is known as conduplicatio. Now coming to the third stanza of this poem. One of the techniques that he has employed in writing this particular stanza is hyperbole. Hyperbole mean, means exaggeration. When he says that there would come a time when we would be fit for tombs, when people would canonize us, they would raise our status to that level with, where the pious men are raised. Jo, jo saints ka darja hota hai, wo darja humko milega ek zamane mein, wo hai exaggeration, wo hai hyperbole. Jab koi exaggerated statement होता है उसको हम रेटोरिक डिवाइसेज में या लिटरेरी डिवाइस में कहते हैं हाइपरबॉल अब दीज वर सम ऑफ द टेक्निक्स दैट जॉन डन हैड इंप्लॉयड आर रेटोरिकल डिवाइसेज दैट जॉन डन हैड इंप्लॉयड इन दिस poem. Now that was uh, the critical analysis of this poem. We dealt with the structure of the poem, with the tune of the poem, with the composition of the poem, with the matrix structure of the poem and uh, with the rhetoric devices that John Donne had employed in this 
poem. I hope that this lecture was helpful for you and you were able to understand that how we critically evaluate a poem. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment at your academy. For more interesting stuff, keep watching your academy.